Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be changing the timing belt on the PSA PureTech 1 litre and 1.2 litre non-turbo engine. And I can tell you, it's a lot easier than the turbo version. This belt is what is known as a wet belt. It runs internally in the engine. And as you can see, it has degraded really badly. So much so that it can, and sometimes does, block the oil strainer. Right, let's get started. To start with, we need to remove the air box on the right hand side. 10 milli and a hose clip. At the front left, there's a few multi plugs that will need disconnecting. Really easy to do. Then the two 10 milli bolts that hold the front of the inlet manifold. On the left, unclip the fuel pipes and lift them away from the rocker cover. The manifold needs lifting away, so we need to disconnect and remove the coil packs and this small breather pipe. In order to lift the manifold, we need to go around the back of the engine and remove the remaining bolts that bolt the manifold to the cylinder head. It's worth noting the manifold will not come out. You will need to reposition it upwards. Just be mindful when you're removing the cover bolts that at the back on the right hand side, there is an earth lead. Just be careful when removing this. With the bolts out, lift the manifold and carefully slide it to the left. It is a little bit fiddly, but it will come out. But just be careful with the wiring too. And don't miss the three bolts in the middle near the spark plug holes. Just check that belt out. We're now going to need to move a little bit lower down. I would start by removing the inner wheel arch liner and then we can remove the auxiliary belt. This is re really easily done. Just turn the tensioner like so and it will just slide off. Now we need to remove the three bolts at the bottom on the crank pulley and then the plastic cover covering the timing belt tensioner as seen here. To lock off the timing belt, we need to place the locking pin in the bottom on for the crank pulley and then the tool on the cams as seen here. Get it somewhere near so that the lobes line up and there is a couple of dots on the cam pulleys so you can know that you're somewhere near and then the bottom pin on the crank will just drop in. I highly at this point recommend that you mark the crank pulley as seen in the images here and also on the cam lobes at the top on the belt as well. You can duplicate these marks so when you're rebuilding it, you know that it's lined up correctly. Then let's remove the tensioner and the guide. Then you will need to slide out the crankshaft pulley and you will be able to see the timing belt at the bottom. The pulley comes in two pieces and has a keyway so that this locks in correctly when you put the new belt on. Now the belt can be lifted upwards. It lifts out from the center, so you will need to push each side inwards to the center through the pulley, and then it will just slide out. It is a little bit tricky, but as you can see, it does come out. And just look at the state of the belt. It's in really bad condition, this one. And so now we're halfway there, it's time to rebuild. I always mark the belt so we have a reference and to stop the timing jumping when we put the belt on at the bottom, I like to tie wrap the belt to the pulleys that you can see here. This will stop it sliding off. And with the belt fed through down to the crankshaft, all we need to do is drop the inner part of the crank pulley from the top down and then this will fit in nicely onto the cam belt so that we can put the remainder of the crankshaft pulley on. Place the outer crankshaft pulley bolt back in place using your mark as a reference and twist it until it slots in. 
the tensioner and the idler can now go back in place. The idler wants to be tightened first, then just ensure that you've got the crankshaft bolt back into the crankshaft pulley, and then we can tension up the tensioner. Just make sure that it lines up with the marks on the tensioner. Then lock it off with the main pulley bolt. You can see it tensioned here. Then all we need to do is get back up top, make sure that the belt's on correctly, and then remove the locking tool. We'll turn the crankshaft two revolutions to ensure that there's no problems with the fitment of the timing belt. And then we will refit once we've done the two revolutions, just to double check, and also on the crankshaft. And then all we need to do now is rebuild it in reverse order. And this, I have to say, looks a much better than the older timing belt that was fitted before. I have also done a video on the 1.2 turbo version of this engine. This is quite a bigger job to do, but if you want to check out the video, I'll leave the link at the end. Back to the job in hand, you may find that the rocker cover gasket becomes loose. All I do in this case is just put a few blobs of silicon in various places just to hold it in place whilst you're putting the rocker cover back on. And another quick tip, when putting the bolts in, I like to use a magnetic pickup tool. Sometimes they can be very difficult to put back in, but with this, you just basically just screw it back into place and then lift the magnetic tool away. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that it's gonna help you when you come to do your timing belt yourself. And once it's all done, you can be satisfied and it runs great as it did before. And as always, if there's anything you're unsure about or need help with, just pop us a comment down below and I'll try my best to help you. And I almost forgot, the deterioration of the timing belt causes the oil strainer to become blocked, as you can see here. This is always worth checking and cleaning when doing this job on the PSA engine. And that's it. Thanks for watching. This has been how to fix it and we'll see you on the next one right now.